Hey guys, it's Prof Sales. And just ask Karen. Happy Friday. Wow, that was loud. <laughs> oh, do the bumper thing. Let people know what they've signed up for. Well, they already know what they're signing up for. We're talking about consignment in the warehouse, which we're in. Whose idea was it to do consignment in the warehouse? <sighs> I anyway? don't know, but it's been amazing. It's been good. Actually, I don't normally been. say that. I don't normally <laughs> no, say that. No, you don't. Um, well, we are glad you guys are here. Um, welcome to the channel. This channel is about reselling. It's about being an entrepreneur, being business for yourself. It's about having a positive mindset and just being encouraging to one another. And um, we're glad that you are deciding to join us. If you're in the live chat today, you can interact with us live. But if not, leave us a question or comment afterwards. Hence the name live chat. We can chat lively. I'm going to pull this a little bit closer because I realize it's kind of far away. Okay. So we have been pretty busy here today, guys, and we're going to show you um, some progress of some of the things we've been doing um, and so on. We're going to take you on a, another little tour. We've we've done a couple tours of the warehouse now, but it kind of keeps evolving. Well, what's really cool is every day that we come in here, it changes almost drastically, right? Like today we committed to um, setting up the photo, well, at least part of the photo area, uh, and some processing and processes, getting them order, getting them in order. Uh, and it's kind of cool. Um, and it's official. I guess it's official. We've officially at least begun the move um, because certain fixtures have already come with us. You know, um, part of our tour is we're going to show you the new. Uh, but you can see over Jason's, and I don't know how this flips it, but it's over his shoulder over there. So um, there's Jamie and Gary, the mannequins. They made it. Uh, so that's somewhat of an official uh, coming of moving age or something. <laughs> the mannequins have moved. It's official. <laughs> and look, look. Oh, yes. The vultures. The birds are here. And they're, like in <laughs> they're in full flight. Although Vince looks like he needs to eat a few things. Vince without feathers is not going to fly anywhere. Just saying. Um, but yeah, the mascots are here. Um, what else did I bring? Oh yeah. So um, I wanted you to do a picture on your Instagram. Um, but these are uh, from, these are the gift that keeps on giving. So um, a very dear friend of us, friend of ours, my tongue is so tied today. It's not even funny. So a very good friend of ours gave us at one of our recent meetups, a, box load of these uh, and I just keep every time well one every time I bring one out of a box to use it on something it's my go-to to fix just about anything mm -hmm. um, and so every time I get one oh, oops she's oh. dropping stuff I think of Jennifer um, and how grateful we are for these but they're awesome because we've got a couple like um, white sneakers that were just a matter of maybe um, as a try on or somebody bought them in the back whatever um, they have a little whiteness that needs whitening uh, and these are going to come in really handy. It's a really easy, easy fix. No, absolutely. And we, it just seems like this place just keeps evolving, um, which I always like because that keeps it interesting, I think. And we're, we're realizing that the potential we have here is pretty huge. 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 We laid out a, um, we started the shelving process and we'll show you guys that a little bit more here in a moment, but we, we figured out we can easily put, that's a four foot by seven foot shelf. And we can easily put like 16 or 17 of them in here. Once we're, we kind of have that space over there a little bit more organized, probably even more than that, probably more like 20, 22. Yep. And, um, we are, well, I am a very use what you got kind of girl. Um, nothing really extravagant. You know, we like ask Jason, I try to, it's funny because we have some friends in uh, on Instagram and Facebook that have the word frugal in their name. Um, and that is me. Uh, that is to a T. Um, but I find this week uh, when the price is right. <laughs> She's been wanting to spend money. <laughs> uh, when the price is right. Uh, and if you've been following on the Instagram, we had a little fun with these new baker's racks on wheels that we got earlier mm. in the week. Um, and they have been a godsend. I mean, they are. Oh, yeah. They are reseller luxury at its finest. They're these steel racks, industrial wheels that we got on the bottom. And I kid you not, every time I come in here now, I will grab one and just dance around the room with Should it. we tell a story about the baker's racks? Can we get in trouble for that? Why would we get in trouble for that? Okay, so we went to Lowe's and found these steel baker's racks. And they're gorgeous. They are. Basically, we'll show you a little closer. You can see them there. There's a couple that are empty. Nice, big, four-foot baker's racks. 
So, um, and they were what, $75? They were piece? $75 regular. Plus 20 <clears throat> for these Mac Daddy. For wheels, casters, for casters, right? right? Um, but they're, to be, they're rubber wheels. They're like, like they could be on a four wheeler out in the woods. They're so substantial. So for whatever, we didn't bring a cart, you know, we're going to grab these six, know, like, 60 pound racks. I don't right? have a shopping cart. I'm like, yeah, I can grab a couple of these. I'm like, that's dumb. Stupid. So we get there and, and Jason, um, you know, it's maybe it's a man thing. Won't ask directions, whatever. So we finally find where they are. And then we finally decide, okay, well, we're, how many did we decide we were going to get? Like I think one. we're going to get two. No, we were just going to get one at that point. Oh, that's right. We're just one. One, yeah. because it would have been about a hundred bucks. Okay. Yeah. A hundred bucks with the wheels and plus tax. So. Which is twice as much, at least as what we were buying for the rubber ones. But a, it was on wheels and we had a purpose for it being it's a bigger more. rack too. Yeah. Right. So he goes around the corner and he comes back and he's like, you know, I think I found that same rack. I think it's on sale for 60, 60, 59, 59 99. 99. Right. <laughs> Jinx. Um, so he cut and, and you know, I have to go see it. Right. Uh, because I'm not going to, no, I'm just kidding. So I go look and sure enough, same number matches up the price tags on it. And what's funny is I noticed that they all have these, like these flyers literally taped to them that say hold for black Friday last year, 2017. Right, right. So last Christmas or last Thanksgiving. So I, you know, being the savvy frugal consumer that I am, I immediately take a photo of that and say, all right, let's grab two. Right. Yep. It's, it's we said we deal. would get two of them. Like it's a good deal. Right. It's a good deal. So I take a photo, we put it in, we bring it up. And this is going to be an exercise in, I wanted to talk about it in our Facebook group, but this is an example of good customer service, or at least a stark contrast between good customer service and not good customer service. So we brought it up to the gal and she rings it up and it comes up 75 and I'm like, oh, Perfect. contraire mon frere. So I show her the picture and she's like, oh, it's so cool that you do that. I do the same thing. No problem. Let me change the price for you. We're like, okay, cool. Thank you. Have a good day. We're out of there. Done. Right. Thinking about it all day long. And we're like, you know what? I love these racks more than I love some people. Let's get more. Come on. I covet <laughs> these racks. I went on and on about the racks. Don't even get me started. So we go back to the same lows, not six hours later. Probably. Yeah. Right? Yep. Receipt in hand, photo still in hand. And we grab three more of these things load them up, bring them to the cash register. And the guy rings them up. And I'm like, hold on. We bought one of these earlier. Here's, or two of these earlier. Here's my receipt. Um, we, you know, can you go ahead and price match? And some fellow who wasn't, and he goes to get the manager or whatever. And some fellow who wasn't even a manager comes over and, and he's like, well, that's wrong. We, you know, we can't sell those. That's the wrong price. It's incorrect. And luckily the manager was like right over his shoulder. And he's like, well, let me take a look. And I'm like, well, you know, we bought two earlier. And he's like, well, that's the wrong number. And I'm like, respectfully, sir, was it? it's not. Here's a photo. And he's like, well, you got that from, and this guy's like arguing with me about what I did or what I saw or what I had or whatever. <laughs> and I'm thinking, is this really happening? Like, are we getting some secret film going on here? So, and, and he's not even a manager. He's just a, like, he's, he just is in right. his own category. So the one, the first guy was really cool. The manager was really cool. And then the not so cool guy stomps off, you know, I'll show you. And I said to the manager, I'm like, is he, you know, at, at, on your level? Like, is he a manager by any chance? And he's like, no. And so that's that. So we got yeah, him yeah. anyway. Yep. We got him. Yep. Um, so, you know, be, be, uh, be looking for the deals, I guess was the long mm. story short. Yep. Oh, well, that's it. I was just she's she's looking like that because I was just telling her, hey, let's get this story along here because it was taken. Like, a long I wanted time. them to feel like they were in the moment, and that's the difference between you telling a story and a, me telling. They me felt story. like they were in a lot of moments, and, and I didn't even tell them the whole story, so whatever. But we got the racks. That's all that matters. But you guys may or may not be able to get them. But the sign says that you should always be able to get it. It's a weights and measures thing. All right, so um, and we put together the racks. And by the way, if you haven't seen that video, it's on Instagram. You can follow me on Instagram. It's down below in the description along with a lot of other helpful links. So check that out. Follow us on Instagram. You can kind of see more of a daily update on what we're doing. And uh, we're really trying to be a little more intentional about that this year. Yes, because we always say we're going to film things and we don't. And the funnest thing that we did this week was a little time lapse of building one of these racks. Yeah. And it was just 
I want to redo it, it on, good. on YouTube and slow it down just a little bit because it was so much fun. Like I, I'm still obviously cracking myself up over it. So you were, she was pretty, she came up with like clever little skits to do and so on. It only ended up being about a minute, right? Oh no, it's Maybe 27 seconds. Oh, oh wow. Is that short? Wow. 15 minutes. But it took us 15 lapse, minutes of time. 27 seconds. <laughs> All you two can see it on the Instagram. Instagram. Check it out. Um, all right. So what else we got? So we started, I'm going to show you guys. I started listing items today, um, which was really cool. I had to create kind of a, uh, I had to kind of create a, a new sheet to, to track this. And, um, you know, it's pretty cool. I'm going to share that with you guys for just a second and show you kind of what I did with it. I'm kind of proud of this one, actually, because we had some challenges with this. And uh, let's see here. Yep. So, so this is the this is the sheet I came up with, and it's got a customer ID, a SKU, and a location over here in these first three columns, and it puts those together into one big tag, and puts in there if the item is listed or not. And we just listed these boots. Um, these are Justin boots. They're all brand new. And um, the cool thing is when we put amounts over here. Um, it's going to do all the fees and so on for us and all this will turn green as well. I'm not going to show you that because, um, you know, some of this is like the, what we share with our, only our clients and so on. And they've asked that we do not, but, um, it's pretty cool. So, um, this was the spreadsheet I came up with. I've still got a couple things to do to kind of get the tracking right and so on, but I just want to share that with you guys. It looks pretty good. Couldn't use my exact one. I'm going to come back from the sharing here. Hang on. Uh, stop sharing. Couldn't use the exact spreadsheet that I, that I sell that's um, available and because it's not set up to do consignment, really. It's set up for a different purpose. And I was going to try to sort of repurpose it and make it work. But it would have been it would have been like a big undertaking to do that. And I just didn't think it was really worth the time and energy to do that. So I created a little different one, um, which is pretty cool. And I'm happy with it. It should track the sales easily. We've got these different statuses we came up with, which is mm -hmm. pretty cool um, in terms of what we do with items, whether we sell them locally or in a bundle or whether we sell them on you know, eBay or wherever. And it'll kind of keep track of all that and allow us to see like when we received items and when we sell it or, or how long we've had it so we can make some decisions on what to do with it. Because one thing in the consignment business we've learned already not that we're, we've been in it that long, but we started thinking about it and realized there comes a point when you have to do something with that item. Like it cannot just sit here forever because we don't have infinite storage. So at some point, and we're not even sure what that point is. If any of you guys in the chat are watching this, if you've had a consignment business, I'd love to get your feedback and your take on this question. How long do you hold an item for a customer in consignment, quote unquote, before you make some sort of decision on it. Maybe you send the item back to the customer. Maybe they give you some sort of uh, permission to donate the item. Maybe you sell it um, as part of a bulk deal. I don't know, but I would love to hear that because that is gonna become a real challenge for us at some point. I'm okay with the higher dollar items staying a while because they're higher dollar items and they're worth it to kind of hold on to for a longer period of time. But I would love to hear you guys' feedback on that. How, if you've, especially if you've been in the consignment business, how long you hold those items. Now, remember, we don't have a retail store here. So we don't have the same demands on our square footage that you would if you were in a retail space and you always had to have new items in there for customers to see. So I know Turtle Trader was in here earlier. I know they do some consignment. And, um, but it's not quite the same for us, but I would love to hear that. Um, yes, Deb. The answer to your question is yes. Just send me an email separate from this um, because I the chats don't stay around. So yes, Ask Karin still exists. It's getting ready for a whole big thing coming up. Um, and uh, depending upon the nature of your question, better to send me an email at askkarin at gmail.com and I'll be happy to talk to you further. Yes, and drummer... Drummer, oh, sorry. Drum, no, no, lots of good ideas. Drummer is uh, saying every 30 days reduce the price. Yeah, and we might do that. The cool thing about, and Karin and I just talked about that today, like making sure, and you could do this with your regular eBay business. If you're keeping track of when you listed things, maybe you're doing it with your pricing, mm -hmm. like you can see it really quickly. Maybe you're doing it in a spreadsheet, whatever you're doing it, 
you can go in and make decisions. We do it in the sense that we do 30 day listings. So when it comes up every 30 days, we mm-hmm. can just drop the price if we want or raise the price, just mm-hmm. something to sort of change the, the visibility of the item again. Um, so that, that might be what we do. Um, I'll see what else is in here so in the chat. Ninja suggested like a staggered, uh, ascending fee. Yeah, we, you know, I hear you on that Ninja. Like Ninja says, maybe you should charge an ascending fee for each additional month. I I have a mixed feeling on that because, you know, we, t- you take on the item to consign. So it's not, I don't know that your consigner should really be penalized because you took the item on and couldn't sell it or it just didn't sell like that. That to me is like, I don't know that that's really the best customer service to them. I understand that you're holding it longer and longer, but I would rather just say, Hey, let's reach a point where we say, let's do something different with it. I don't know what, but I don't know that I want to kind of like keeping them like that's like holding their feet to the fire for the item not selling. That's not really up to them. Um, I get that it's like a demand on your space and you're having to justify that. It's almost like long-term storage fees on Amazon, but that's not really our model, I think. But I don't know. I, I probably won't go that exact route, but who knows? Maybe we'll change our mind. On that. Well, and we looked at, you know, well, first, um, we've got some friends that also, we've got friends in the chat that do consignment, but then we've also got some other friends um, that we're talking to about. We're actually going to do a show, hopefully within the next week or two, like one of our connect shows. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, cool. Well, then we'll get to talk to Paul about it as well Nice in March. So, but we're going to do a show strictly on consignment and how it fits into eBay or online selling in particular, because we research different um, <coughs> programs like in inventory programs and processing for consignment but it there were some things missing that we needed that were individual to online sales and so we're kind of not not necessarily trying to reinvent the wheel i mean you guys know that jason's all about the spreadsheets but we're trying to like <laughs> the, what we've worked out here is pretty cool and it has a little bit of my you know like your like formula next level stuff. And then me always reminding him to keep it simple. Like it, it's great that you can, you know, formulate all this stuff, right. but you don't necessarily have to know all the things in the every single moment, right? So we're kind of coming up with this as we go, but it'll be interesting to talk to others and, yeah. and how they do it. Well, and one thing we did, and this was kind of Karin's idea, right from, well, it was your idea right from the beginning, we created these um, <clears throat> these statuses in the spreadsheet and platforms that we sell on, and it it color codes those cells depending on what's going on with the item. So you can very quickly see at a glance what's going on with certain items and make some decisions. You could group together by that color if you wanted and say, "Hey, show me all the items that have been sitting here that are sitting here, and we're trying to sell maybe locally, for instance, that we've had for six months," and then you can make some decisions on it. Um, somebody, uh, Sarah asked, speaking of spreadsheets, is there a great video on YouTube to learn how to make spreadsheets? I have one made, but I have to manually add amounts. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of great YouTube content on making spreadsheets. It's almost overkill. There's a guy named, uh, Mr. Excel who I think has a video. I mean, this guy has a lot of videos. He has hundreds of thousands of subscribers, I think. And he, I mean, he's thorough. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Like he has videos on spread on Excel, especially on virtually every topic you can think of mm-hmm. with Excel. But overkill. It is overkill. <laughs> and a lot of it you probably don't need for this. I obviously sell a spreadsheet that it's listed in the description below. Shameless plug, but you did ask, so I'm gonna tell you. And I think it covers a lot of, but she said I have I have to manually add amounts. And that is the problem. eBay does not make it simple to integrate Mm -hmm. their reporting with your reporting. Mm -hmm. There are some things you can do. There's something called the file exchange. You can download your sales in a CSV format. You can even set that to come down automatically. And you could go in and then pull that info into your spreadsheet, just dump it in one area and then tell another area of the workbook to do something with that data and manipulate it, you know, put in your records and so on. But you're going to have to do some programming to do that. So either manually or pull in their record keeping, but it's, and there's third party apps that will do it too for a fee and a price as well. 
But I mean, it's just, there's no simple way to do it on eBay. It's just kind of the nature of the beast. Well, and we just talked about this morning about how even the reporting could be glitchy and you don't entirely hmm. trust pulling that full report. I don't. And being able to match it up. I've so seen glitches in it. I, so I saw that. I saw one the other day when I was pulling down some records. I was like doing some tests, you know, with for, for this consignment stuff. And I, it had like the same item. It said it had sold three times, but it had no data for it. <laughs> and I think what had happened was that it, it, somebody had bought it on a best offer, didn't pay, then canceled, but it recorded it like three times. But there was no info in some of the call. It was, it was bizarre. Um, how bizarre. How bizarre. How bizarre. Is anyone using commercial software for consignment? Which one is best? Oh, man. Rich Hill finds Jilly. I, I searched a lot of different options for something that would work for us, and I came to the conclusion that none of it would really be perfect. And it's not cheap. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't say it's expensive, but the cheapest consignment option I found, <clears throat> and I don't even know how functional it would be, was 50 bucks a month. And many of them went as high as 150, 200, 300 bucks a month because a lot of the consignment software that's out there wants to integrate all the inventory tracking, a POS system, which we didn't need. A lot of bells and whistles that if you were running a physical brick and mortar consignment store would make sense. But for what we were doing, did not. So I just, I just did not really care for it and decided, you know what? If maybe down the road we'll change to something else, but I'm going to go with what I got right now and it'll make sense. <clears throat> well, and we went back and forth too. We're still not convinced whether or not we'll use barcodes at some point. Mm -hmm. Like we're definitely yeah. not going to do it right now, but we kind of, we, we actually went through the process and set it up as if we would work toward using them. Um, but then we went back and we're like, well, if this system works, we don't know if, so we're kind of back on that one too. Um, and we're we're setting everything up. We like to batch. We're proponents of batching tasks. Yeah. So as we lay out the warehouse, the shelving and the countertops and everything, the the work surfaces, we're doing it in a way that makes sense to us. Like that that movie we watched. The was was it the founder? Yeah. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. That was great. So where they <clears throat> where he um chalks where they chalk out the brothers chalk out their McDonald's store on the tennis court and they keep redoing it, redoing it until they're efficient their workflow makes sense and people aren't running it. So we don't want to basically run into each other and drop fries and Cokes and yeah. burgers on the floor, if that makes sense to you. So we're kind of purposefully making it more difficult in the beginning because this whole very extensive spreadsheet that we're sort of recreating specifically for consignment, you know, our goal is to have to work toward employees being here. So we have to make a system that's going to make, we want it to make sense to you the minute you come and work here. Right. And so it's right. going to be tagged and bagged and it's just, it's got to be simple and it's got to make sense. It's got, That's exactly right. And as this space fills up more and more, there will be less and less room. So having an efficient system, you know, it just, it just makes a lot of sense. Like we, I don't think I still have it up on my, on, on this page here, but, um, do I have that design thing? Uh, IO. I don't know if it's still there. I can't find it. Well, we actually created kind of like a little product workflow. We there's a lot of little free software oh, out there yeah. that will show you. You can kind of create like a diagram and create your processes and sort of move blocks around and sort of figure out how you're doing. And you can add stuff in them. So we used one of those to sort of map it out. And we've probably already changed that like five or six times. So you can't bring it up because that's. If, uh, let me see if I can. Try one more time because it's really cool. Yeah. What, what is that called? It's called like a bubble chart or something. What um, do you call it? Yeah, it's just basically a flow chart. Uh, there it is. Um, let me see if I can get this to come up. I'll show you guys what we we kind of did here. Um, this is from a site called. Uh, let's see. Uh, I think it's this one. Not product flow. Nope, it's actually this one, believe it or not. Um, let me make sure. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's not one to come up exactly right. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, we, we think that there's um, a lot of, there's like a lot of value in just sort of figuring out what, what your processes will look like. 
Um, so anyway, uh, let's see. Um, Sorry, Ninja's giving a movie review and it just made me laugh. Can't read that one out loud, Clarence Ninja. Yeah. But yeah. The Founder was a good movie. I mean, yeah, it, well, there's a good lesson at the end about business relationships for sure. All right. So let's, uh, we should probably show everybody around a little showing. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. All right. We're going to take you on a tour. Three hour tour. What are we going to do? Well, let's show them. I guess we can show them the photo area. All right. Let me, uh, so we opted for uh, Jason's photo cube, um, and will the lights turn yeah. them off in the back? Yeah, you can turn them off. So because, there we go. Um, this was simpler than bringing back all of the backdrops and things, but look, we put a pair of shoes in there. Booyah, it's done. Gorgeous. Yep, you can turn it off. It, yeah. it screws up the filter, I just yeah, realized. I know. But yeah, this this little table is cool. This is the one we got from Costco. You can see it there, and it adjusts adjusts the height. Somebody was asking me about it on Instagram. It's at thirty four inches at the top, which is nice, nice and then size. It goes really low too, which is very cool. All right. Um, so then the so rollers wanna... have um, different degrees of of pro process as well. Um, and this is a this is my section. I'm listing these. Yes, I am. Um, and that's just a temporary work surface here. Um, this more, was my work surface, but I absconded with the better one over there. So Karin's giving me Yeah, grief. so I'm gone for five minutes to go to the bank and I come back, you're like playing on Instagram and then I have no seat anymore. So there you go. So more stuff to list, more stuff to list. That's collectibles. We brought a shoe rack, um, inventory. Uh, oh, you even Saw labeled shoe rack. I see what you did there. Oh, yeah. Here, let's move these racks out of the way. Oh, here, right. I'll do it. Oh. How cool is that, huh? All right, enough of me <laughs> dancing with my rack. Wow. All right, so there's that. Um, and then we put, um, you know, we're already starting to mark the inventory sheet, uh, uh, shelves. One, two, three, four, and five. Very simple inventory system for this, guys. I literally am calling this fixture A. And as you can see, it's just going to be like shelf numbers because I don't know what I'm going to have from clients, consigners. So I can't really get too specific with like spots in between on a shelf. So we're just literally gonna call this fixture A. Let's see if I can get my hand out of the shot here. Fixture A, um, spot sh shelf one, shelf two, shelf three, shelf four, shelf five, and then so on. And we think, I'm gonna back up here so I can show this shot. Um, we think that like this, this area right here from kind of over there, to the, where the phones are, you can see them sort of there in the background, over there to the table and right here. We can get nine more of these right here. So that gives us 12 of these. Actually, we might even get 10. So these are these are um, four feet by seven feet by, I think they're what, 24 inches deep? No, they're 18, they're 18. So these shelves will hold quite a bit and they're quite sturdy, but of course we're gonna have to get some other shelving in here as well. So that's a lot of items. We can definitely hold, you know, probably 1,500 to 2,000 items on those shelves, no problem. But um, we're pretty excited about that. Oh, I guess we got to show the office area. The office area where we were sitting. For now. You're going to talk about it? Oh, Let me talk. Uh, that's a desk. And there's a computer on it. And a, I mean, that's just, it's, it's a desk. It's a work service. It's a listing. We were going to get rid of that desk because it's a little shoddy. A little wonky, but it's but... serving a purpose right now. So we're able to put the Dymo on there, the scale, so we can pre-weigh um, and determine how we're going to ship certain things. So it's working. It's that little shelf. Yeah. Is these, little con these little containers that Karin had us keep, they roll, and they can't take a lot of weight, but I've already found a use for them. There's actually two of them. There's another one over here. So my thought was I would pull this one out when I'm when we're listing from this desk If we list from this desk and put the scale that you see right there on it and weigh things because It's a nice big flat surface and this one could actually be used to hold product in the moment So we've got four or five things we're working with um, but our idea is Just to kind of show you guys again items come in through the door which we have open today because it's a beautiful day here It's like 75 degrees <laughs> Yay global warming um, so we we're at, this stuff will be gone before too much longer. We'll have these areas to process and sort of intake things and, and prep and, and uh, prepare them if they need to be cleaned. And then items will flow 
right from there, back over here to the photo area if need be. And, we, and we'll transport them on the racks so that way they're mobile. We don't have to carry them over. We can bring over, you know, 30, 40 items at a time, a lot more efficient than trying to carry them. Plus, you're not as likely to drop and break them. They'll come to either here or to here and be listed. And then, and that's not going to stay there, though. That's probably going to actually move back over here near the dock once we start building out these shelves. But for the moment, it can stay there. They'll get listed, and then they'll go into inventory right here. So nothing ever really gets too much out of this hub. That's the warehouse as it stands today. It stands today. Woo. And you know that Jason's only worry is humidity. And when we first came in this morning, it spiked. So there's the humidity reader for now. What's it at? Uh, 52? Oh, 50, nice. 54. Well, 54. It was at 52. Um, but we found that on rainy days, we're going to get a spike in humidity. It's just going to happen. Um, and since we've opened the bay door, it's gone back. Gone, gone down by about 12% total because it yeah. was 66% right. when we first got here. And again, there's no sign. We have no reason to believe that it's going to be an issue, but we are going to monitor it. That being said, we've also not done anything proactively to um, mitigate the humidity. So we're, we can do that too. You know, the whatever, the charcoal, the dehumidifier, the running the fans, like there's a whole litany of things that we've discussed trying so before we freak out, yeah, we're going to at least try those things too. We're, we're pretty confident. It, see, it's already gone down a degree since we've been here. We're yeah. pretty confident that it's not going to be an issue. So. Yeah, so whichever one's got less humidity, we'll, we'll open the door if there's less outside. <laughs> and, and we found out there's offices below us, right? Yeah, supposedly. I, I it's a concrete that, floor. Like, that is so weird. I don't, I don't even get that, but anyway. I don't even um, really know about that. There's behind, but I don't know about We're them. ground floor over here, but maybe it slopes on the other side of the building. Yeah. Um, we're going to drive around and see that. I got to see that for myself. Um, but um, some other questions came in. Uh, somebody was asking about the black rack. That's the song mix shoe rack, um, mm -hmm. which we have a link to in the description. Those are great. I mean, they're only, I think they're like 36 or 38 bucks now shipped on Amazon. And they're awesome. I mean, they hold 50 pair of shoes, which is Tremendous. I the only thing the only issue I'm going to see with them here probably is just orienting them in a way so that we don't knock them over. We might even put two together. We might. Um, that might be the way we do it. But. Yeah, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. Dio asked if we're moving the jeans inventory. Yeah. So the plan is not only have like this place is huge. So the plan is not only to have the consignment inventory here, but our inventory as well. So the jeans are coming. We brought the shoe rack just because it's our last holdout for being an empty one right now. All the other ones have shoes on them. So, yes, at some point you're going to see we have some more things to clear out here. Well, we have a lot of things more to clear out. Um, but as we start making these spaces and dedicate them to certain things, yes, jeans are coming, shoes are coming. Um, what remains of our hard goods are coming. My my account, uh, can't say a store because I'm just me, um, but I sell all kinds of thingies on my account. So those, you know, have to have a place too. So. Yeah. I mean, we, huh, it's come so far. I mean, think where we were two months ago, like a month mm -hmm. and a half. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll, we'll see, you know, kind of how it progresses. But um, this first batch has been great. Like I was able to list those five pair of boots all basically sell similar because they're the same item. <laughs> they're just different sizes. So. Um, that's five hundred dollars worth of items already up, which is amazing. Um, so I was pretty happy about that. But it's going to be a process, guys. I mean, whether you're in a warehouse or whether you're in a space in your home or a storage building or whatever, there's no reason that it has to be disorganized. That it has to be inefficient. I mean, that's where something. There was a section in that movie called The Founder where they they talked about the how they laid out the perfect what became McDonald's but basically the perfect workflow so they could get you your food in 30 seconds from ordering. And it was crazy. Like they, they squeezed out every bit of a little efficiency out of a space that was roughly the size of half of a tennis court. And um, <clears throat> you can do that with your own business. You can do that with your own setup, like make it simple and easy on yourself. Like take the time once or twice to figure that out and think about how many hundreds or thousands of times that's going to save you frustration and headache and time. 
So there's no reason not to do that. Well, and I'm going to tell on you a little bit because right. um, somebody said we're like little two little kids in a candy store. Yes. It didn't start out this way, though. We've had some bumps. We've had some frictions. Oh, we've had some contradiction. I mean, we've had like, and for the first time yesterday, when we left yesterday, you were the most positive and enthusiastic that you've been. And because you could see like we've gotten to a point where we change so much and rearrange where the vision is starting to come together and that's powerful stuff like there's nothing as motivating as it, it, it's one thing to have it in here um but now it's starting to like be yeah you know and we have the racks <clears throat> and we're and and we're still able like it's all in a state of flux i get that um, but it's like we can visualize, okay, processing, shipping, listing, uh, whatever, photographing. It's all going to go, and this is our plan for it. And what's really cool, uh, and this is going to sound counterintuitive, but garbage truck. So what's really cool about that, too, is that even though we have an idea for how it's going to be, we're so comfortable and confident that it doesn't even have to stay that way. Right. Like, like it's like in in – it seems like for some of you that these are like big steps and that we've come a long way, but it's baby steps for us. Like we're okay. Now the photo space is here. Yay. Um, but we're not going to get so married to the idea that it's going to stay exactly like that. And I think that if you can embrace it with that sort of open mindedness, that you're not setting yourself up for disappointment. You know, like I get really set in my ways about a lot of things and change. I don't do well with change often but with mm -hmm. this it's a little different like it's an acceptable part of this flow about this business that we're you know hey we're gonna, we might set it up like this today but we're gonna we could change it tomorrow and that's okay um one of the friction items that we've had and we brought it upon ourselves is whenever we start something new whether it's a spreadsheet a project a process whatever we purposefully overthink it we purposefully try to break it. And I was explaining this to somebody the other day that, you know, it, it might seem a little frustrating to people, but we're putting ourselves through it on purpose because we want to know the weak points before the bridge is built, not after. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it totally does. And, you know, I, I, when I was a kid and I was in college, I worked a lot of temporary agency jobs. And a lot of those jobs ended up in warehouses. And I saw, I worked in dirty, stinky, ancient turn of last century warehouses to modern, efficient, up-to-date technological Marvel warehouses. And those are probably nothing compared to what we have today. But one thing I learned was that when you can find the item you need in a relatively quick and efficient manner, Everything else is kind of details. So if you can set up your system, if you can set up your organization to where you can find things, whether it's the toner for the, the printer, whether it's paper for the printer, whether it's the scale you need to weigh something on, maybe it's some more bulbs for your light kit, or you know, let's not even talk about inventory, right? If you can find it, everything else is just sort of details. But I see people in the reselling community who show these photos and videos and so on of their, their death pile, their inventory space. And it's just a big pile of crap. And I think to myself, not that it's bad stuff. It's just, it's chaos. It's chaos. And I'm like, if you have all that chaos in your organizational system, there's no way your business is running smoothly. Like you're, you're hurting yourself doing that. You cannot live in chaos and run an effective chaos free business. It just does. I mean, imagine guys, think about it. Any business you were in, if you walked into a furniture store and all the furniture was up on its ends and tilted against the walls and mismatched, mismatched chairs, and they may tell you, oh, it's all in great shape and we know exactly where it is, but there's no way you'd believe it. And there's no way that it's true. So I, I just think that it's important when you have a space, whatever your space is, you have to take some time to figure it out, plan it out, have a system that works for you. And if that one doesn't work, pick another one, like startups, do more, you know, because it pays off in the long run. Yeah. A big pile of what? Ah, so well. I was just talking to my friend Sarah the other day and her um, big task for the day was to clear her desk. 
because it had, as a lot of our desks do, accumulated all kinds of piles of what, what? And so, you know, there was this sense of not only personal completion and satisfaction, but you're not going to, when you let the, when you let the death pile grow mm. or the desk become overwhelming <clears throat> or, you know, when the piles get too big, then it's so easy to just not want to do anything oh, about yeah. it. So then it just, it perpetuates. It just gets worse. It's always getting worse. So if you have a messy desk today, clean it. You'll feel better. You'll thank me I like that. tomorrow or maybe not. But, you know, like it, you're right. Chaos breeds chaos. It does. It does. And you, you think you can rise above it, and but it'll filter over to other areas. Mm -hmm. um, Clarence asks, when do you expect to run out of space? That's a great question. Um, I would say it would be a couple years. I would, I would guess sort of at what kind of thinking, I haven't really sat here and thought about it in those terms, but once we kind of get the rest of that space over there completely um, prepared and this space is completely prepared to the front end, this middle section is close already. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a good couple years, maybe even three before we would really get to the point where we'd have to think about moving out of the space to somewhere larger, but it kind of depends on, how well we can connect with um, consigners, basically. I mean, that's going to drive it. Like the more consigners we have, obviously the more items we're going to get, the more space we're going to need. So I, I just don't have a good feel for that yet. And we know the space, we know the space we need and can work with for the stations, the processes that we need, right? Like we know that space. We also know to the inch how much space we need for the jeans, the 2000 jeans. We know, right? 2000. Yeah. And we know how many, how many racks and how much space we need for the shoes. So that's, that's a set amount. The other stuff is kind of, yeah, it's going to yeah. be a work in progress. Kinda, like I feel like in this space we could probably, I don't have a good feel for what the average size item is in terms of the, the square, the cubic footage, but there's, kinda, a, there's a spreadsheet for that. There is not. But just kind of thinking about space and so on, just in general, and shelving and how it might it might fit in here. Um, you know, I think there's definitely uh, definitely the room probably for 2,500 to 3,000 items. Kind of thinking about, you know, just what size those items probably would be. But, you know, I don't know that for a fact. Like getting that many in here and processing that many and so on is like, uh, it's just like, that's so many steps down the road. I just can't picture that quite yet. Right. And somebody, before we get to that one, somebody asked early on about, um, a BOP. That's our best practices, right? No, they were asked about it. I think they were asking about insurance. Oh, what's, um, what's like BOP? a business owner's policy. I think I, if that's what they meant. I'm not sure they're still here in the chat. Oh, um, I, oh, I thought it was. I'm sorry. I peed in on the best practices. Yeah, I think as this model evolves, that is definitely something we are going to have to have. Um, so I don't have an answer for you in that moment. We just started this business model. And fortunately, we're in a position where it's not really as much of an issue at the moment just because of um, the first client we have and so on and his flexibility. But as we go, we'll see kind of what that looks like. Um, but that's definitely um, something we're going to have to consider getting if not maybe a necessity honestly just because you know anything can happen right and you know uh act of act of god act not of god i mean it's uh, especially sure. with things you know we've talked from the the beginning about being responsible for things that aren't ours so we'd of course want to have things in place that if something happened heaven forbid, oh yeah yeah you know yeah absolutely uh, let's see what else. Any other questions or comments? Are we got anything else to share? Um, we did humidity. Oh, and it's all you also know it's official when look what shows up <laughs> the tape gun. That's true. The it's true. This tape gun is she here. is adamant about that tape gun. I'm adamant. Oh, you're adamant about the tape itself. Oh, yeah. I'm um, a fan of the tape gun. She uses tape like nobody's business. Um, so anyway, um, but I hope you guys kind of got a good feel for where we're at. Uh, we will, I don't know how much we'll be doing here this weekend, but next week is like full on list it all, list all the things mm -hmm. and, you know, start 
selling some of the things. Hope, I, man, if one of those boots sold over the weekend, I'd be so pumped. I'd be like, yes. <laughs> um, just the little things like that. But uh, we're, we're going to see kind of how this shakes out with this first client and then go from there in terms of the fine tuning and tweaking. Fortunately, he is super, super uh, supportive in this and, and we're very thankful for that. Um, and he's very laid back about, you know, it, it's just him like, this is all gravy. There's no, there's no expectation that's just crazy or unreasonable. And I would never, uh, I would never do that anyway. I would never, I'd never want to have, you asked me about that yesterday. You said, what if we had a client who insisted their items, you know, sell for such as, um, you know, before we even took them on. Well, I mean, how could you even guarantee that? You can't. You can't guarantee that people's items are going to sell for a certain amount. I mean, you can give them the benefit of your expertise. But if someone says, I really need to make this amount from this item, and I, you know, did the research on it and found out that, like, it just didn't make sense and their items in general didn't, I would not take them on as a client. It's just going to be trouble. I mean, it's going to be a problem the whole time. They're going to be dissatisfied. We're going to be dissatisfied. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's no guarantees that we want items to sell. We don't make money until it sells. So, um, you know, we've already been the time, but you cannot promise be deliver. Well, and here's the thing about consignment or taking on a partner, uh, inventory, whatever. It's ultimately up to the consignee. Like, you don't have to. I mean, actually, you don't have to take somebody's stuff. Like, if they want to micromanage or change too drastically. I mean, I get mm -hmm. that there will be one all things we need to do, um, but make no mistake. We are eternally grateful that our, for lack of better, our getting this, the first couple of steps here is most generous and very good. Oh thing. yeah. Not these. Like, it's successful. <laughs> well, there's that, but you know, like this has been like that part of this process I think has been in the most valuable because we're actually able to bounce off of this person, right. you know, necessarily further down because right. we're all three part of this tweaking process. And we're able to say, so what do you think about, you know, this? Or, yep. And we're solving a pain point for him and, mm -hmm. you know, a business model for us. So, I mean, it's a win-win. Mm -hmm. There's, there, there are no sides. We're on the same side. <laughs> You know, we, we don't want, we don't want to take things from people that don't sell. I mean that, or we can't sell or too much work to sell or not enough profitability to sell. I mean, that doesn't make sense for anybody. So, um, we need to be able to run a profitable business, just like we need to be able to deliver value for our consigners. Well, and like we said, we're getting, we're going to get back to, we're going to be here a lot more. Um, apologies for missing Wednesday, but sometime workers got to work. Uh, oh, way and, too much going on. Yeah, so no no show this past Wednesday, but we're going to be here a lot, so we're going to try to get better about the regular schedule. Um, if we're ever not here, when we say we're going to be here, um, it's because we're probably working, right? Yep. Um, but we also are committed to bringing back the Connect shows that we do, uh, and we are in the works to line up a couple of things, including another – can I can – I, Sure. Um, we're going to have say, um, we're sure. going to have Jared back on to talk about taxes and accounting for the reseller and some other stuff and some other stuff. Well, yeah, yeah, not just that, but oh, he's going to talk all things Jared, um, and we're going to talk about uh, other resellers that do consignment, and there's some other things that we're working on. So we're going to go. We're going to do some evening shows coming up as well again too. So. All right, guys. Well, look, that's going to do it for today. Sorry, uh, we don't have more time, but we've actually got kind of a busy afternoon going on. Uh, yeah, another rugby match tonight. Woo -hoo! Yes, and I'm, I don't know what I've got to do tonight. I gotta do something. Um, but you, gotta, you gotta sell some things, man. Sell some, we hope you guys have a great weekend. Enjoy hanging out with you and, um, and join us on this journey. We appreciate it. What else do you think, Lauren? Well, they should smash the like button, mateys. Yeah, check out the description down below, guys, for helpful links. And uh, we'll be back here on Monday. I would have, I would have. Yeah, we will be here Monday without fail, unless. Hey, it's you know, President's something. Day Monday. <gasps> we oh, we might have a special guest. Maybe we're gonna Maybe. try. Wouldn't we're that not be gonna, something? We're not gonna say who it is yet, though. But wouldn't it be something if he came when we were? Yeah, it would be amazing. Hint, hint, hint. Nudge, nudge, nudge. All right. Keep killing it, everybody. Have an awesome weekend. <laughs> I'm Prof Sales, and I'm just Ask Karen. Same. Good, Good sales, sales to you. you.